Hey everybody! So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together this 3D printed flying tourbillon. So what is a flying tourbillon? So basically uh, when watches and clocks were uh, first created, the springs that they used to use, the metal wasn't as good as the metal we have today and was affected by gravity. So they created this really cool mechanism called the tourbillon, which completely turns, so it's not affected by gravity. Uh, when metal got better, that wasn't a problem anymore, so. But now it's just a really cool uh, piece of, uh, piece of uh, uh, machinery. So let's put this guy together. So we'll start with the base here. And then we got my spring. And you probably want to know which way I'm going to put the spring on. So the best way to see it is this is a ratchet, so we want to make sure that it's ratcheting in the correct direction. And the way we can tell is if we hold the spring in place and we start turning, you can see that the spring is tightening and it gets caught. See how it's getting caught there? So if we have the other way, Start tightening it, it would get, it would just come right up undone so it doesn't ratchet properly. So you'll see in just a second when I put this together. So I'm gonna put this on right here in the bottom. See if I can get the uh, clip to go in here. There we go. the last one. <laughs> Oop, nope, now we got no bad spot. Let's try this again. There we go. Let's see, now watch. Oops. Now watch. When I turn it to tighten the spring, you notice how it's not moving. So the ratchet's working. So if I turn it, I can see that it starts ratcheting. And the reason you can hear it clicking is that it's ratcheting. Okay, and then if I let it go, careful, because the spring's tight. All right, so now we've got the spring on the base. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next piece, and that is this piece right here, and it goes right in onto the top, and it goes right in like that, and holds in. Now these are little dowels that I made with a toothpick, and the reason I used a toothpick was that using a piece of filament was a little too thin. If you see here, if I put the filament in, you see how it wiggles a little too much? Yeah, that, that wasn't wasn't good, so I decided to use it for this back piece. I could probably use a, a toothpick for that too, but what I found was I used these two little toothpicks and I just sanded them down just a little bit. They fit perfectly. And notice that they're the two toothpicks are the same height, but the filament is a little longer. So let me show you that a little better. So you see here, got the two pieces of dowel, and one just fell away, and two just fell away, and they all just fell away. <laughs> there we go. See, it looks almost like a, a hot dog there. You got the two buns and the, the hot dog in the middle. Okay, so put the uh, the two pins back. Oops, if I can keep them from flying away from me. There it is. Okay, so we'll put the pins in, and then we'll put the PLA piece in. Okay, and now. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this the other way. So I'm going to put that down. So I'm going to grab this piece right here. So this is the top portion. And so this is the hairspring. And 
this guy you had to glue in, so he's already been glued in. So unfortunately I can't show you that, but if I show you here, this will be a little easier to show you this way. So I put the two pins in. Okay, and now what you see here is the air spring and the base. Okay, and then you take the piece of filament and you put it in and it fits in just right. Like I said, I could probably use a toothpick here. I might try that next. All right, now what we want, so this is called the escapement and he goes right on the edge here. And the reason he's called the escapement is he actually lets energy escape. I think I got that the right way. If not, we'll turn it around. Okay, and this is called the anchor and the pallet fork. And what happens here is this, well, let me put it on, you'll see. <laughs> so if I put it on here like that, so what happens is, so you notice how it's locked and it won't move? So what's happening is you can have a big power source on one end, which is trying to turn this guy, and he gets locked. And what's keeping the mechanism going is this little hairspring. It's kind of a counter spring. So this guy goes this way, this guy goes that way, and it slowly turns, and it slowly lets the energy out of the clock. So let's do this. I'm going to put this on. Let me put this on. So this is called the balance wheel. Okay, and that goes right on top. Okay. And I forget what this little, forget what this little guy's called. Maybe he's the anchor. Who remembers it? <laughs> okay. He goes on right there like that. Okay. And then the little pallet fork. Or the anchor <laughs> goes right there. Okay, see how cool that moves? I move that back and forth. Okay, now this is the fun part. So while holding this, hold it nice and steady in your hand. Okay, take this other piece and we're gonna line everything up. This could be fun doing this with the camera in the way. So and just go and find the the filament and find the, the pegs and I think I might have it. Let me turn it around slowly. Whoops. So you can see this one's not quite in there. So just be take your time and be patient and look for anything falling out. Okay, I think we might almost have it. Oop, I think he the filament's still not in quite right. There we go. Okay, we can see that the dowels are in there nicely. Looks like everything's in there nice and well. Okay, and then once everything's in there nice, just give these little guys a pinch around the edges right here and here, and that keeps it together. Okay, now what you'll notice is that if I, if I twist this, it just spins around because there's nothing holding it together or nothing holding the gear right here, the escapement from spinning. So that's what this little guy is for. So he's a little challenge to get on. You just go right underneath the balance wheel. Oops, make sure I mean the, the frame there. Okay, so I got it behind the balance wheel and then it's a little bit of a push where the escapement is. Just be careful not to hurt yourself or hurt the parts, okay? Just again, match up the, the pegs. Oops, there we go. And just take it slowly. There we go. All right, same thing when we're matching it up. When you're nice and together, just pinch them together. Okay, that should look like this when it's done. Okay, and that's the spring. And by the way, this spring is made out of PETG. It's not PLA. And the reason why I used PETG was because it's a lot more springy. It tends to last a lot longer than the PLA. The PLA is really good for this hairspring because it has to be nice and stiff. Um, 
and the PLA is great for that. And there doesn't seem to be as much wear put onto it because we're not constantly putting stress on it like we are with the mainspring here, uh, or at least not the same kind of stresses. So watch. Um, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll start turning the spring. And what's really cool about this design, uh, by the way, you can get this on Thingiverse. Um, this is a really cool design. I didn't make it. I just printed it. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys how cool this was. Um, so um, as you turn the spring, the ratchet mechanism is built right into the frame. So you turn it and it keeps tightening. Okay. Okay. You can see how it's tightened there. And if I flip it over, now watch this. There it goes. Now what's happening is it's a, a clockwork mechanism, like I said, and as the main spring is pushing, the balance spring and the pallet fork and the escapement are keeping everything from winding, unwinding too quickly. And see how it's spinning? And like I said at the earlier of the video, this was originally done to overcome gravity because materials weren't as good back when this little guy was created. This is an unbelievably cool piece of engineering, I think. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, put together, and uh, keep an eye out for other videos. Take care. Bye-bye.